Hi and welcome in this new video. My name is Mark Lamarty, Head of Customer Education at Astronomer. And today we are going to build an AI agent using Pydantic AI and Gemini 2.0. This video will be based on this incredible article that Volker has written. I strongly recommend you to take a look at it on Medium. It is just super, super interesting. The link is in the description below. But now we are going to build that AI agent in order to ask questions about our DAGs without truly specifying which DAG IDs we are looking for and so on. So let's get started. The first question is, what is an AI agent? Well, the definition is pretty straightforward. An AI agent refers to a system or program that is capable of autonomously performing tasks on behalf of a user, you, or another system by designing its workflow and utilizing available tools. So unlike what you typically do with ChatGPT or Claude, where you enter your prompt and then you get an answer, agents actively engage with their environment. They make decisions, use tools, and execute tasks on your behalf. Now, a tool can be anything that will help the agent to produce a better response. A tool augments what the model can do by letting it request extra information. So for example, a tool could be an API, an access to a specific API, or it could be an access to a web browser, or a calculator, or um, a library, whatever you want. If we take a look at how they work, in a nutshell, you will need to prompt what you want to accomplish. So for example, booking a flight, and then the AI agent will use the LLM in order to build the workflow to accomplish that action. Keep in mind that the agent is not really the LLM, it's more like a program that uses the LLM as its engine. And then the agent will pick some tools, for example, a web explorer or a search API or a flight API in order to enrich the LLM and ultimately build the workflow, the series of actions to take in order to book a flight in our case. Now you have a better idea of what an AI agent is. Let's take a look at what we are trying to build here. So we will build an AI agent that will interact with the Airflow API to gather information about our DAGs. And the idea is that let's imagine you have many DAGs and you are looking for a specific DAG but you don't remember the DAG ID but you do remember what this DAG does, for example processing e-commerce data, then you will just put that description, you will prompt that to the AI agent and the AI agent will be smart enough to return the DAG ID and information about that specific DAG based on the description you gave. To build that AI agent, we will use Pydantic AI. Pydantic AI is a Python agent framework designed to make it less painful to build production grade applications with GenAI. And honestly, it feels so much easier and more straightforward than using LangChain, but at the end of the day, it is up to you to choose the framework that you want. And to run Airflow locally, we will use the Astro CLI. The Astro CLI is an open source project. Anybody can use it, it is free. But in my opinion, it is the easiest and fastest way to run Airflow locally. You will just need to have Docker installed on your computer and then follow the instructions according to your operating system. Now, it's time to build the agent. Okay, first, let's set up the project. And for that, we need to have a Python virtual environment with Python 3.12 installed. So you can use the tool that you want, but in my case, I'm gonna use pyenv and then install 3.12, okay? Then we're gonna use Poetry to install the required dependencies. So let's create a new project, Poetry, new Pydantic Airflow agent, and then go into that new package and here we want to use the Python version 3.12 that we have installed using pyenv. So you type poetry env use and then the path to the Python binary. Hit enter, perfect. Now you can open your code editor from that folder. I'm using cursor, but use the code editor you want. And as you can see on the left, we have a pyproject file. And here it's very important that you change this line. So change this line by the following one. Otherwise you may have some troubles to install Airflow and other dependencies. Then save the file. From here, we can open a new terminal and let's install the required dependencies. So the first one is Pydantic AI. Then color log. And finally, Apache Airflow. 
So you can see that we are using the version 2.10.4. Then last but not least, we can initialize an Airflow project using the command astro dev init. And again, you need to have installed the astro CLI for that. And as you can see on the left, we have some files and folders that have been automatically generated for us. And now we can run Airflow using astro dev start. Once Airflow is running, you will land on that page and the username is admin and the password is admin. So now you have access to the Airflow UI. Let's go back to the code editor. Open the DAX folder and remove the example DAG. Then create a new DAG file. Let's call it payment.py and here type from Airflow, decorators, import DAG and task. Then from Panelum, import date time, and then create a new DAG, a very simple new DAG, by the way. Start date, date time, January 1st, 2025, with the schedule to daily, catch up to false. Then the DAG ID is payment, create a task, and let's say process payment with a print, okay, and call payment, like that. Copy the code, create another DAG, this time customer profile, that PY, paste the code, and let's rename payment customer profile, same here, and then here let's create a new task, display profile and put your name. Okay, so two very simple DAGs, payment and customer profile, it's going to work for what we are trying to achieve. Don't forget to call the tasks for your DAGs, so process payment here and then display profile here. Okay, so now we have the two DAGs, let's move on to the AI agent part. In the Pydantic Airflow agent folder, create a new file, agent.py, and this is where we're going to build the AI agent. The first step is to create a data class that will be used to pass connection settings to the model, to the AI agent, so it will be able to connect to the Airflow API. So import data class, and then create the following data class. As you can see here, we have the API based URI, the port, the user, and the password. Next, we need to define how we expect the agent to respond to us. And we expect a structured object that represents the state of a DAG, including some information such as the DAG ID, the DAG display name, if the DAG is paused, the next DAG run data interval start and data interval end, and so on. For that, you just need to create the following class, called DAG status, which inherits from base model. And as you can see, we describe the different fields that we expect in the answer of the AI agent. To be clear, base model is a Pydantic class that it is used to constrain the structured data returned by the agent. So from this simple definition, Pydantic will build the JSON schema that tells the agent how to return the data and perform validation to guarantee the data is correct at the end of the run. So that's why we are specifying the field type here as well as the description. With that, we can define our model and agent. For this example, we will use Gemini 2.0 Flash. And for that, you have to have a Google account and then go to aistudio.google.com and get API key. Create an API key, then select a project and create an API key and store this API key as an environment variable. So create the following environment variable, Gemini underscore API underscore key equals to your API key. Now let's create the agent. So Airflow agent equals to agent. And that object takes a few parameters. The first one is the model we want to use, which is Gemini 2.0 flash. Then the system prompt corresponding to a set of instructions that we want our agent to follow. And those are the instructions. So you are an Airflow monitoring assistant. For each request, use list DAGs first to get available DAGs 
and then match the user request to the most relevant DAG ID and use get DAG status to fetch the DAG status details. As you can see, we are quite explicit on how the AI agent should behave, but ultimately it depends on the model that you use. Sometimes you won't have to be that explicit and sometimes you will have to be more strict. Next, after the system prompt, the other parameter is the result type, which corresponds to DAG status. So how the response will look like. Then the dependencies with depth type equals to depths that corresponds to the connection settings to the Airflow API. And finally, retries to two, and we have set up the agent. We still need to make some imports. So at the top of the file, type from Pydantic base model and field. Then from Pydantic, AI import agent like that. So make sure that you don't have any other warnings. And now it is time to add some tool functions so that our AI agent can retrieve a list of DAGs and interact with the Airflow API. So the first tool we want to create is this one. So let me give you a quick explanation because I know it's a lot. So first to turn a function into a tool, you need to use this decorator from your agent. And then you can see run context. Run context contains the dependencies that you have defined earlier corresponding to the Airflow API settings. Then you have this doc string. This doc string is very important as it is given to the LLM as the description of the tool. Basically, that's how the agent knows which tool to use. Then we have the URI and the auth corresponding to the settings to connect to the Airflow API. You can see here API slash V1 slash DAGs and we use the dependencies. Then we have this async client where in it, we make a request to the Airflow API. We get the response as a JSON value and we extract DAG ID, DAG display name for every DAG. And finally, we return the result. Notice that everything is done asynchronously so that we are not gonna block our AI agent. Next, there is another tool that we want to add, which is even more complex than this one, but not that much, honestly. This tool is used to get the detailed status information for a specific DAG by a DAG ID. So once the AI agent has found the DAG ID of the DAG we are looking for, it will fetch some information about it. And that's exactly what we are doing here. So again, we use the tool decorator, we have the run context, and then the DAG ID that comes from this tool. And we use the connection settings to connect to the Airflow API. We use async client again, but this time on a different endpoint. And then we make the request to get the DAG runs. And finally, we return some data in JSON. And if we are getting an error, then we will return that the DAG with the following DAG ID does not exist. Finally, now we have all tools we need. We can run the agent by creating the following function, main. Then we define the dependencies corresponding to the Airflow API settings, then the user request. So what we are looking for, and in this case, we are looking for the status of the DAG of our daily payment report. And then you can see here how we run the agent, Airflow agent dot run, and we pass the user request and the dependencies, and we can print the result that the AI agent returns. Then we have this code, which is pretty basic Python code. So we run that function when we execute the Python file with Python and then the name of the file. Before running the agent, we have to make a few imports. As you can see, there are some warnings. So at the top of the file, let's import run context from Pydantic AI. Then we can import async IO as well as JSON, then logging and pprint from the dev tools import pprint. Okay, so make sure that you don't have any warnings. So you can see here we have one because the logger is not defined. So to define the logger, again, at the top of the file, you can use the following code like that and import color log as well as from HTTPX import async client and then we still need to import HTTP status error from HTTPX. So we can just do that. 
and that's it. So you shouldn't have any other warnings. Now in the Airflow UI, refresh the page and then turn on the toggle for both DAGs. Refresh the page again. We can trigger customer profile again. Let's do it twice and then one more for payment. Okay, so make sure that you have some data as shown right here. Back to the terminal, make sure that you install DevTools, otherwise you will get an error. And also make sure that you have correctly exported the API key with Gemini underscore API underscore key and not with the E as I did previously. Okay, otherwise you will get an error. Now it is time to run the agent to see if it works. And for that, the command is poetry run Python and then the agent. Let's see what we get. And again, as you can see here, I'm not specifying any DAG ID, but I expect that the agent will return information about the payment tag. So hit enter and wait a little bit. Okay, so we can see that the agent is doing some work. And as you can see, it works. This is crazy because I didn't specify the DAG ID of the DAG I'm looking for, but the AI agent has been smart enough to find the DAG and indeed it is payment DAG with some information. So I don't know about you guys, but I just feel it's, it's crazy what we will be able to do in the future with AI. So if you want to learn more about Airflow with AI, please let me know in the comments below. Again, I would like to give a huge, huge shout out to Volker for this incredible article. My video is based on that, but I strongly recommend you to read the article he did. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss anything about Airflow. And I see you for another video. Take care.